All right, you guys, we spent three days working together, and then here we were given this test right here. So this was our practice test. Let's go ahead and get started here. So so Gina earns $2,000 each month, and she spends $200 on taxes, $800 on rent, $400 on food. So which of the following best describes uh, her graph? Okay, so, so we need to find the fraction amount. 200 divided by 2,000 is um, uh, 1 tenth. Okay, so I did that right here. 800 divided by 1,000 is 2 fifths. Well, 2 fifths is the same as 2 tenths. So here I've divided up a circle into 10 equal parts, and I put them into the position so it looks like this guy right here. So here's the taxes right here, and then uh, 2, two tenths is 1 fifth right there. So this is the food right there, and then uh, 4 tenths is uh, 2 fifths, or 4 tenths right there is going to give us uh, our rent right there. So can you see the taxes in this position, the food down here? Anyway, so if you can just divide the circle up into tenths, that'll be easiest. Okay, so it's uh, choice C. Sorry, I didn't write choice C. So, All right, so 7A minus 7B. Let's pull out the 7. So when we pull the 7 out and divide both sides by 7, we get choice C right there. Okay. Okay, so when you're subtracting a smaller number minus a bigger number, you can subtract the bigger minus the smaller. Just know it's going to be a negative okay so choice D right there as long as you line up the decimals okay a squared equals 3 so 2 a squared well 2 squared is 4 a squared is a squared so this is 4 a squared so 4 a squared is going to be the same as 4 times a squared and since a squared equals 3 uh, 4 times 3 is 12 okay all right, so what's the value of this? So we're going to plug in x equals negative 3. Negative negative 3 is positive 3. And then negative 3 squared is 9. So we get 3 over 9, which is uh, 1 third on that one choice C, OK? All right, so the table above shows the time spent uh, by Sally at the campus computer lab each day last week. So what is the average time she spent at the computer? So average is we're going to add all these up and divide by the number of numbers. There's seven numbers, so we get uh, uh, choice uh, B, okay? All right, so here we have congruent triangles, okay? So a congruent triangle, so it says the measure of x, b, y. So here's x, b, y. This angle right here is 80. So since these triangles are congruent, this angle equals this angle. So that's uh, 40, and that's 40 right there. And the measure of angle x, y, a is 50. So similarly, that's 25, and that's 25. So AXB is going to be the rest of the triangle right there, okay? So when you do all that uh, math and add it up to be 180, we get uh, choice B. All right, which of the following portions could be the graph of y equals uh, x squared minus 3? Well, this is in the form of uh, x minus 0 squared minus 3. So, so this is a parabola. Think opposite, same. So the vertex is at 0, negative 3. And it's opening up, you guys. So 0, negative 3, that's going to give us this guy right here. Okay, if we had x equals y squared, that'd give us these uh, going to the right graphs right there. So when it's y equals x squared, that's mostly what we deal with. Um, anyways, it's going to be opposite, same. So it's that one right there, okay? Okay, so in the figure, angle BED and BEF are right angles. Let's go ahead and highlight those right angles right there, okay? The blue guy is a right angle. The red guy is a right angle. And then they gave us uh, BEC. So here's BEC is 32. So from the red guy, 32 and 58 adds up to 90. And then from the blue guy, 58 and 32 adds up to 90. So we get choice C on that one, okay? All right, that's a classic uh, geometry problem. All right, so Lenny spent one-third of her income on rent and one-fourth of her income on car expenses. What fraction of her income is left for other, frac uh, other expenses? So we have to add those together. And before we add, we've got to get a common denominator of 12. So 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths is 7 twelfths. So the rest of her money is the rest of the 12. So 12 twelfths minus 7 twelfths is 5 twelfths. Okay, choice D. Okay, easy enough. All right. So here we go. 11 uh, 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 
is it Bayou uh, can process 36 envelopes for mailing in 24 minutes this is a proportion one just make sure whatever you put on top has to be on top so 36 envelopes over 24 minutes equals 120 envelopes over X minutes cross multiply you get choice C okay all right what's the radius of a circle that has circumference of 1 so circumference is 2 pi R remember that's given to you okay so dividing both sides by 2 pi um, uh, they give you those formulas at the beginning of this test so when you divide this by 2 pi and this by 2 pi we get uh, choice A okay all right uh, here the table above shows the percent of students in different age groups at a university campus the total number of students at the campus is 8,987, approximately. Okay, the key word is approximately. So it, Matt, it, I'm going to automatically round this to 9,000. Uh, how many students at the campus are 25 years or younger? So here's 25 years. So 20, I'm going to round this to 25%. I'm going to round this to 45%. And when I round those guys, that rounds to 70%. This rounds to 9,000. So 70% of 9,000 is approximately 6,300. Okay, the word approximately let me do that. All right, so uh, let f be the function de defined by 2 to the x. What's the value of f to the 6 over f to the uh, f of 6 over f of 2? So 2 to the 6 over 2 to the second, okay? And then uh, as long as these bases are the same, you can go ahead and um, subtract. Two twos down here will take two of the 6 up here, so there's 4 left. 2 to the 4th is 16, okay? All right, there are 2,962,856 people who live in Wonder City. And 39.6, this sure smells like approximate right here. So 39.6% of them are registered to vote. Of the following, which best approximates the number? So I'm going to approximate this to 3 million and approximate this to 40%. Uh, so we're going to look for 40% of 3 million and we get uh, 12 million okay so um, uh, I'm sorry 1.2 million so uh, did I say uh, 3 million that's yeah yeah you guys get it okay sorry all right so here we're gonna go ahead and foil okay and I call it the claw method you guys so if we if we put the X through X times X is X cubed X times negative X is negative X squared X times 1 is X and then put the 1 through we get that Com combining like terms things cancel out we get choice a okay all right so here all right parallel lines parallel lines means we have corresponding angles that are equal so if that's 7x that's 7x this straight line is 180 so these two add up to 180 so we get x equals 20 okay all right so here we can pull a 3 out, a 3 out of this, and a 3 out of this. And when we do that, we GCF that out. I did that down here. Here the 3's will cancel, the X minus 1's will cancel, and we're left with uh, choice A. Okay, so here uh, we're going to go ahead and cross multiply. When we cross multiply and then divide by um, uh, 2 root 5. Whoops, that should be our root 5 right there. Let's see if I can fix that real quick. Uh, 2 root 5. Uh, there should be a square root right there. Okay, and so when we divide both sides by 2 root 5, the root 5's cancel, the 2's cancel. K equals... Um, uh, 5 over root 5 okay 5 over root 5 so we get rid of the root 5 in the denominator by multiplying by 1 root 5 over root 5 gets us 5 root 5 over plain old 5 and then the 5's cancel okay so it's uh, choice A right there okay alright so here we can go ahead and subtract those exponents so we get 3 to the 150th all right, the length of a rectangle is 16 centimeters and the diagonal is 20. So we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem because rectangles give us right angles. X squared plus 16 squared equals 20 squared. So we get X equals 12 and the, uh, the question's asking for the perimeter. So we add them all up and we get uh, 56. All right, which of the following um, uh, list the three numbers in order from least to greatest? Okay, what I did, in case you don't know, well, this is an improper fraction, so this one's greater than 1. 
these two are less than one. Think of uh, smaller numbers, the ones that we know of where the numerator is w one less than the denominator. Like one half, one half is 0. 0.5. Three fourths. You see how three is one less than four. Three fourths is point seven five, and point five is less than point seven five. Okay, so um, so one half is less than three fourths. So that means six sevenths is going to be less than eight ninths. Okay, and since seven six is an improper fraction, it's the biggest number. So there they are listed in order. So uh, choice B. Okay, other ways you can do that, but uh, in case you don't uh, remember, just make them smaller during a sale. At a furniture store, the discount price of a desk was $180. Uh, the discount price of the desk was obtained by reducing it by 40%. So that means this 60, this is 60% of the original. So 60% of what number is 180? And so go ahead and do um, um, uh, the percent over 100 is over of, and then cross multiply. And so we get uh, choice C on that one, okay? All right, there's other ways to do that. So if you want to do it another way and get the same answer, that's okay. All right, almost done with this part. So the table above shows the total values of ticket sales for an afternoon show in each of five movie theaters. There were 300 tickets that were sold for each uh, theater, okay? So 300 tickets, 300, 300, 300, 300. And it says the ticket cost for each adult is eight bucks and four for the kids. So in, in which theater was the number of children twice the number of adults? Okay, so children is twice the number of adults. And since there were 300, you guys, I had to do that first. There's, that means there's going to be 200 kids and 100 adults. See how these add up to 300 and there's twice as many as adults right here? So which one is going to come out correctly right here? They're all 300 right here. Okay, which uh, movie theater had twice as many kids as adults so so the kids are four bucks so 200 times four and the adults are 800 so 100 times eight you're going to do um, uh, 200 times uh, um, uh, four and so which one's going to give us 1600 bucks only choice a gives us 1600 bucks the other ones don't do that that's the only one that fits this problem right there all right i'll stop after this one and do part two so the maximum speed at which a certain car can enter a curve without skidding depends on the radius of the curve Okay, the maximum speed in miles per hour can be modeled by that function right there where r is the radius of the curve in feet. So if a curve has a radius of 250 feet, then based on the model, which is the maximum speed in which the car uh, won't skid? So this is just plugging in, you guys. We're going to plug in 250 right there and solve, okay? So 5 times 250, 2 goes into 250 125 times. So 5 times 125 is 625. And the square root of 625 is, um, is 25. All right, I'm going to stop there and do the second part next. All right, take care.